Every March and April, we watch in awe as the classics hard men and women sail over these brutal, bone-rattling cobblestones. The TV doesn't do it justice, and they make it look easy. But in fact, it is far from it. Yeah, and what can make it even more difficult is the wrong equipment and the wrong technique. So coming up is GCN's guide to conquering the cobbles. Let's start with the most simple aspect, which is a straight, flat, cobbled sector of road. Uh, we have chosen to come to the Palestrat in the Flanders region of Belgium because it's perfect to get yourself acquainted with this type of riding. Yeah, now you might not actually think there's much to it, apart from riding your bike as normal and pretty much accepting that it's going to be a bumpy ride. But it's a little bit more complex than that. Yeah, the first thing is line choice. I know I'm talking like a mountain biker here, but you have three options. You can ride in the center on the crown, where the road is slightly raised, or you can ride to the side where the car tires will go, or you can ride in the gutter. Now you might be thinking that riding over on the dirt or in the gutter is kind of evading the point of riding on the cobbles. And to a degree, you are right. But if your aim is to make your ride as fast and efficient as possible, then it's a valid option for you, just as it is for the pros. Just be careful though, there can often be a lip between the dirt and the road, and you can get into all sorts of trouble if you can't jump back onto the cobbles. The safer option, even if it's far bumpier, is to stick to the part of the road where the car tires will normally be. Oh, you are right. Yeah, definitely stick to the cobbles, Dan. Oh, God. There's not that much of a crown here in the centre of the Palestrat, but particularly over in the cold stretches of Paru Bay, it really can be quite pronounced. And it means there's quite a camber on either side, and that can be particularly slippery, especially when it's wet like today. What you should always do, though, at cobbled sectors is really scan what's coming up ahead. So look out for things like big holes in the road or missing cobbles and try to avoid them well in advance. OK, let's have a look at technique. Now the first thing you want to do is try and relax your upper body, which is easier said than done, especially when you're rattling over the cobblestones. Now the tendency is to tense your upper body, your hands and your arms, and you definitely want to avoid doing that. Yeah, your wrists and your elbows will provide an enormous amount of suspension over the cobblestones, but only if you let them, and that means not tensing them up. And also you'd be very surprised at just how good your bike is guiding itself over the cobblestones without really any input from you. Keeping a little further back in the saddle is also going to take a bit of pressure off your front end. Now, onto a biggie, hand position. If we take a look at two of the best cobble classics riders of the last generation, Tom Bonin and Fabian Cancellara, they both tended to ride on the tops. And if it's good enough for them, yeah, it's probably good enough for us as well, isn't it? It's a position that gives you a lot of control and you can also keep your wrists a little bit relaxed to give more in the way of cushioning. That said, there are also plenty of very successful pros who prefer to ride on the drops and a few who stay on the hoods, although that's probably the least stable. It's one of those things you'll simply have to choose for yourself. There's no real wrong or right from that point of view. Although I would recommend not riding on the hoods because there's quite a strong likelihood you might slip off. So use the drops or the tops. Whilst we're on the subject of where to sit on the saddle, we should also probably mention that sitting in the saddle is a pretty good idea on cobbles. Although something that I particularly struggle with because my natural tendency whenever things get short and steep like this is to get out of the saddle if I want a bit more power. Yeah, which is particularly important when it's wet, like today. You need to keep your weight as far back as possible over the back wheel to avoid wheel spin. Because if you get it wrong, you might end up grinding to a halt, putting your foot down, or worse still, falling off. Yeah, it is possible to get out of the saddle even on wet cobble climbs, but you just have to be a bit more careful with your weight distribution and also fairly uh, even power distribution. You don't want to be too choppy, Otherwise, your back wheel will skip around. Which brings us nicely onto our next point, which is grip. Cobbled roads don't offer as much grip as normal tarmac or concrete, and when they're wet, they are particularly treacherous. So you need to allow greater braking distances and approach corners with caution, even if it's dry. 
Look for any adverse cambers and avoid them. Although there are some cambers that will fall in your favor, a bit like a berm, like this really. You're loving your mountain bike term. I am, yeah. I know what you mean though, this could be also compared to the banking on a track, because you know, it can help you. Uh, if you get it right coming around a corner like this and your wheel is planted here, you'll have a bit more grip and therefore you'll be a bit safer. You might be able to go a bit quicker if that's of concern too. One thing you should never do though when you're going around a corner on cobbles is brake. That is a recipe for one of your wheels slipping out. Another consideration when you're riding on cobbles is your speed, because the faster you go, the easier it is. Ride along at 15 k's an hour and you're going to feel every single lump and bump. However, if you start getting up to 45 k's an hour like the pros, you're going to glide over them. Now, you're probably not going to be able to ride as fast as the pros, admittedly. But if you can press on as hard as you can, it's actually going to make it easier for you. Plus, it's fun riding fast on cobbles. <laughs> Come on, guys, give, let's give it a nudge. And yet another consideration is your cadence. Now our recommendation is to keep it on the high side if you can, because if for whatever reason you have to slow down, it's really hard to get going again if you're in a really big gear. Now personally, I'm probably not the best example of this, but if you are able to keep a high cadence, it will allow you to keep on top of things and also to react to any changes of gradient or pace. Aside from the technique that you employ when you're riding over cobbles, the equipment that you use can also have a massive bearing on how it feels when you're riding over them. And luckily, it's not particularly complicated. The easiest thing to do is just to get a bigger set of tires and run them at a lower pressure. Now, the pro riders will tend to stick to a fairly standard 25 or 26 mil tire for the Tour of Flanders here. However, they will go bigger, up to 30C or above, for Paris-Roubaix. Yeah, but we're not pros, so we'd recommend trying to run 30 mil tyres if your frame will accept them, or 28. And the benefits are manifold. Firstly, better punch protection. Secondly, better grip. And thirdly, and arguably most importantly, better comfort. Yes, and that better comfort comes from the fact that you can run larger tyres at a lower pressure without any increased risk of puncture. And that extra suspension that they provide will take out a lot of the vibration normally associated with riding over cobbles. And we can't even begin to tell you how much nicer it feels to run a 30c tyre at 40 psi versus a 23c tyre at just 80. Hmm. Now, you will go a little bit slow, of course, on the tarmac, but it will be worth it on the cobbles. It will feel like you're flying over it. Uh, on top of tires, you could also try to double wrap your bar tape or maybe get some mitts or gloves with extra padding. But to be perfectly honest, the differences they make are pretty insignificant compared to the rubber on your hoops. Rubber on your hoops. So as you can see, there's a fair bit more to riding the cobbles than initially meets the eye. I still can't believe you came off. I was, conquered by, I was conquered by the cobble, it was a bit sore actually mate. Uh, anyway, they are thoroughly enjoyable to ride if you do get them right. Yeah, they are. Right, if you've enjoyed this video, please click on the thumbs up sign down below. And if you'd like to see the Koppenberg, probably the most fearsome climb in the Flanders region, in closer detail, just click down here. Shall we ride the Mollenberg one more time? No, I'm done. I want to go into smooth tarmac again now. All right then. I'll do it on my own then. Good state of that ass. He's in! Hey!